Welcome persistent and optimistic agents and investors from across the country. Today is Thursday, April 9th, 2020, and this is Mastermind Call number 273. And uh, first of all, I wanted to congratulate Taj Walker. He was our winner of the week last week. And I use those adjectives, persistent and optimistic, because we, the four owners of the company, just continue to be blown away with with the attitude of all of you. We we have just, everybody has a can-do attitude. And um, to date, we've only had, I think, about a dozen courthouses where we're not able to get data in. Every time we reached out to one of you and said, hey, do you want to just take a break or do you want to take the surrounding counties, uh, I think virtually every single one of you has said, no, hey, I want to keep making the calls. You know, I'll take the surrounding counties till mine come back. So I just to let you know, if that does happen, we will reach out and we'll be proactive and let you know and give you the option. And uh, But so far, so good. The vast majority of the country, um, I won't say it's business as usual, but it's um, you guys are carrying on and you're doing a great job. So. Congratulations. Um, we did a uh, we had a record attendance yesterday for the role play call, and um, Chad, you may maybe you want to summarize that. And I also just wanted to really quickly touch on if any of you haven't seen it, uh, the Fed just came out with uh, a mere two and a half trillion dollars to kind of uh, get us on a, the road to a quick recovery. And this is probably not the forum for that, but Chad, I assume you'll probably be covering that in Shift Happens. So if you would, maybe just take a few minutes and summarize yesterday's call and, um, and tell them how to, um, to tune in to Shift Happens for the next few weeks. Sure. So for anybody who missed the role play call, uh, a few places you can find that. And obviously in our Facebook group, All the Leads Mastermind, in our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash all the leads, or if you want everything together in one place, you can go to all the leads.com forward slash CCVA for conference call video archive. Um, and that will have the links out to the other places, but um, multiple places you can, you can consume that, whatever, and, and types like on, on the, the video archive on our webpage on all the leads.com. There, we, we actually may be everywhere. It's being posted, so you can grab it in a video format, MP3 audio only format. So however you like to consume your content, uh, we try to you know make it so everybody can get what they want. So if you haven't listened to yesterday's role play or all any of the role plays for that matter, um, go check those out. If you're on the phones prospecting, the difference in yesterday, as you might expect, we kind of you know we're we're the role play has evolved. As, as we've had to just to, to, to adapt in this environment. So there was more you know, COVID-19 crisis specific language and ideas that we that we use there. So that was the biggest difference. Um, we did have you know agents who who were willing to step, put themselves in the hot seat and and role play. And that's always that's you know that's a big shift that's happened over the last year or so more people are are you know we 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 have more courageous people who are willing to step up and and be criticized by everybody and they they're they're better for it so i really appreciate that that people are willing to do that um and that to me i see that as progress i see that as, as you know more confidence and and more competency so it was a great role play, uh, so go check that out. As far as shift happens, that's if you're just tuning in, if you've just found us, we're doing a series every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right now we're starting at noon and going until I'm out of time or energy. Um, we've been running about two hours per session. So we've kind of called audibles here and there. I had a, a laid out schedule that, that only lasted for a couple of days before I started focusing on other priorities. For example, yes, on Friday, we did a review of the CARES Act and all of the personal and business incentives or, or stimulus ad, uh, resources that came down to us as small business owners. And as that's evolving and changing and, and the train wreck is happening, um, there's, there's updates. So yesterday we just slowed down and focused only on the Paycheck Protection Program and the EL, EIDL grant program. And I showed you exactly where where the information is coming from, directly from the SBA, not from, from BS articles, exactly how to apply. And, and we answered a lot of those questions that realtors and investors have. So 
to find that, that is Shift Happens Episode 7, and basically in all the same places. You can find it in All the Leads Mastermind, All the Leads Facebook page, or all the, uh, YouTube.com forward slash All the Leads. Go to Playlists, and you'll see a playlist called Shift Happens. Uh, as, as we learn more about just this morning, as Jim said, the Federal Reserve, in an unprecedented move, has committed $2.3 trillion in loans at, at basically the Fed Reserve rate of 0.01% on a four-year term. That's all we know right now. But as I can learn more and get official publications of that and, and give you good information, we'll be doing sessions on that and how you as a business owner can step up and use that to your advantage. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of things happening in the background, like in finance and credit markets. The reason that they're willing to swing for the fence with a package like this, it's a really good thing for our industry short term <clears throat> because it will backstop credit markets and calm down some of the turmoil in, in, in lending. Um, long term, it's going to create some, some headwinds for us, but if we know how to take advantage of those and, and Hopefully, I'm, I'm smart enough to, to show you how to be on the leading edge of that. But the whole idea with Shift Happens is it's a series that even, even when you do feel hopeless or, or like you can't do anything right now to move the needle, what can we do to show you how to prepare your business, prepare your mindset, and take advantage of these complicated, unprecedented things that really aren't that simple to understand? So if you haven't tuned in to any of the Shift Happens sessions, we have almost 14 hours of that right now. I would encourage you to go look at that because it's it's specific to our industry and specific to, you know, it's not all probate specific like these calls usually are, but it is something that I'm doing my best to try to, to show you things that will, will help you prepare for this and not only not only get through it, but lead your way through it. So that shift happens. Excellent. And we have 10 people in the queue. and. Um, uh, Tim, I saw you just came on, so I don't want to leave you out before I get to the queue. Anything you want to add? No, I think you got ten people in the queue. Let's get to the folks there. I'd just add <laughs> words. Of the things are continuing apace. I think the good news is that from a statistical standpoint, there's light at the end of the tunnel, and if you are following what's going on, as I'm sure you probably are, we all are, uh, there is encouraging news in regard to the path of the disease that caused a lot of this stuff and I'm encouraged by you know what we as a country are doing and uh, slowing things down to uh, allow us time to get through this so uh, continue to be safe we want all of you to uh, be here when we come out of this on the other side and we're obviously feeling like we're all in a good place to help you do that and we'll be in a better place when we come out the other side if we continue together we're sort of kind of unique to be part of a community at this point that happens like this. I think people come here to get encouraged every week and we're doing our best to encourage you and also we're still continuing to see amazing results from people who are simply refusing to lose and move forward. So keep doing it. And that's all I well, have. But, um, well said. We now have a dozen people in the queue and for, we try to keep these calls in an hour. I think an hour 15 is our limit because uh, we all have to get on other calls. So if, if you have multiple questions, maybe if you would ask your, your most pressing one first. And if we don't get to all of you or get to all of your questions, as always, as soon as the call is over, just send an email to support at alltheleads.com and tell us what we didn't get to, and one of us will personally call you back. So having said all that, I recognize a frequent flyer here up first, uh, phone number ending in 8183. You're up first. Hey, guys. How are you? Excellent. Hey, How are you doing, sir? Excellent, excellent. Nobody wanted to reply. Okay. I just have a, um, a, 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 a testimonial. I used voice logic. First phone calls went out yesterday. They were very hands-on and working with me. I got to talk to my caller, picked a female, sweet voice, told her the mindset, made her first calls yesterday. She set two return calls for me, and I've literally received three voicemails today. I'm like, you've got to freaking be kidding me. I was banging my <laughs> face on the wall doing these calls, and I'm like, so that's what a professional telephone caller can do. So, wow. I, I'm actually 
got names on scraps of paper because I wasn't expecting the deluge. It's just amazing. So there oh, you go. Oh, that's good to hear. And you're talking about the voice concierge service, which is completely compliant and legal, right? She's actually making live calls? No, yeah. Basically, it's, you know, she's not my employee, but she's basically yeah. my employee making phone calls. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, that's great. Well, please come back and let us know when those leads convert to, uh, to uh, you know, physical appointments and especially when they convert to listings. So that, that's really good to hear. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. We appreciate it. John, how many were on the list? Oh, this is what's funny because I had to combine from what was left the last month and this month. There was 163, 160 some odd between the two months. But I sent them in the Excel in two separate tabs, last month and this month. They missed one tab. They only made 83 calls. So like 6% wow. conversion. Yeah, she, she, she got me to, you know, they send you this report. and they, So two people wanted a call back from me. Um, and then I got three um, voicemails today. Yeah, so that's like six percent conversion. That's nuts. On the first on the first round. That's awesome. It, I, I, I can't. I, can you hear my voice? I can't freaking believe it. <laughs> you sound uh, a little bit enthusiastic. Of, we love it. <laughs> figure out why you're so sad, John. <laughs> hey, thanks for thanks for contributing. We appreciate it, man. All right, next up is phone number ending in five four six four. You're up next. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, this I I know this isn't a role playing call, but I had this yesterday, and my response to this gentleman kind of seemed like it turned him off. So I wanted to try to get on here. He was really adamant about the courts. So a property went through probate, and he is now able to sell them. There's four properties, and he was really adamant about selling them according to the value of the property uh, or, or the, you know, a percentage of the value of the property uh, according to the, the court mandate. And I, I just don't know what's, what's the best um, thing to do when they, when they bring that up or, or should I not even talk about that and just, I, I, I need to know the best way to handle this. So just to be clear, this is outside of probate. They inherited the properties and the, quit, the interfamily transfer has occurred, correct? Yeah, it has gone through the courts and the property is now in the, in the guy's hands. Okay. And he, had a, he got a valuation to the, <clears throat> like he probably got a BPO or an appraisal to tell the court what it was worth to handle the rest of the distribution to the family. And he's saying he wants that number, right? Uh, he was he, he was saying that it needs to be that seventy five percent or whatever of that number is what he would like. Okay, and do you think that's a fair valuation? Are you are you disagreeing with it? I don't know. So I haven't gone and seen. There's four there's four properties and three lots in the, and I'd like to purchase the whole package. And do what with it? What's your end game? Uh, I would wholesale three of the properties, keep one of them, and then try to sell the, the lots. Okay. In this environment, what I would suggest you do, you're an investor, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I would suggest you start with trying to, to negotiate a straight owner financing where you take title and he, he carries a first against the property and just say listen you know I, I'm gonna I would be much lower than this cash because we I'm catching your falling knife and we both know it right so until the economy comes back online we don't know what the real unemployment picture is we don't we don't know what this looks like and we don't know how prices are going to correct but we know they will so what I'm willing to do right now is, is, is share risk with you. So rather than me blindly paying you yesterday's price and getting it handed to me in, in three or four months, how about you and I share in this risk? And there's two ways we can do this. You can sell the proper, property to me outright and I'll give you a first mortgage against it and each month I'll make you a payment. 
so over time you'll actually make a lot more money because I'm going to be paying you principal and interest. And I'll, I'll even, you know, to make this worth your while, I'll give you, I'll pay you an 8% interest rate in a 3% interest rate environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then see if, see if he flinches. If he flinches, your backup idea, your, your contingency is, okay, well, listen, let, let me sweeten the deal for you a little bit more. I'll be willing to give up my tax advantages, so I'll let you hold title, and that's called a contract for deed. And in the event that I do default, you don't have to get, take me through a judicial foreclosure. All you have to do is recover the asset based on the terms of the notes, and, and I'll sign anything, whatever our attorney, whatever my attorney and your attorney is comfortable with me signing, I'll make your recovery as easy as possible. So I'm willing to pay you full price of the full price you're asking for, but in order to do that, you're going to have to share in some risk with me and, and, and meet me on terms. And by the way, either one of those scenarios will have a five-year balloon, so you won't be carrying that for any more than five years. But at, 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 at 8%, your money will essentially double every seven years. So you're, you're probably going to make 80% more money if I go full term than you would if I just paid you cash today. So which do you like better, the contract for deed where you hold the deed and have it's easier for you to recover? Or do you like uh, holding the first mortgage? Which of those works best for you? And pigeonhole him into those two options. Take cash, take cash off the table. That's your, that's your ultimate fallback. But you're going to have to discount him on the cash. So you want to show him how you're serving his interest, and you're showing him how to make a lot more money over time. Now, you probably will not hold that loan to the five-year balloon, right? So he won't really make 80% more money if, unless you do hold, hold for that long. But that gives you a chance to gain control of the real estate, hopefully potentially for free with no money down, by offering him full price. And if he needs a down payment, then you start trimming his price until you balance it out where you can find an amicable agreement that works for both of you. Got a lot of uh, interference in the background. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm just sitting. Yeah, I apologize. Uh, I heard everything, so I, I will, you know, see how that goes, and I'll present him with that option, with those options, and see how it goes, and uh, we can, uh, I'll report back. Yeah, I and mean, obviously. The other, option, the other option is, man, you just go in and hit him low, like a price you are comfortable right. with. I mean, I, I assume that's, you already knew that, so I didn't go there. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to suggest, find out what the price is and see if that's acceptable also. You know, that's another alternative. And if you have deals like this and you need help after the call, like like I said, just reach out to us. You know, we're Chad or I or one of us are always available. But good good luck and the good news is you're uh you're you know, you're you're get your seat at the table and you're getting opportunities. So that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. Next up is phone number ending in five six seven two. You're up next. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, so I'm going to put myself out there like some people did yesterday. I am new to this. I'm a real estate agent, and I understand probate. It's been going on in my family uh, off and on over the years, but it's my first time as a real estate agent to um, jump in feet first. So I'm learning more and getting set up to send out my first letters and stuff. Um, building the team. Now, I have contractors. I have estate planner um, planners I have um, the um, you know people to come in and, and sell off the, the properties you know the chairs and all the furniture and stuff but I have never worked with in, an investor and so um, my question is how to find investors and line them up and put them in my you know my back pocket to call and talk to about when I get you know get a house or something or that they were interested in, in a cash offer or something like that. So this is all new territory for me, so I thought I'd put myself out there and ask that. Absolutely, and thanks for stepping up. So I think the best thing we can give you in the interest of time on this call, there's I do a video series called Tips from the Trainer. And Kat can Kat can link to that and and then show the notes for this where this call will be posted. But if you go to alltheleads.com in the top right, you'll see a, glo a global search bar. 
type in how to find cash buyers and that's going to bring up it's it's a I, I, we post it as a blog post you can also find it on youtube if you go to the playlist tips for trip tips from the trainer but uh, there's about a i don't know a 12 15 minute video and i give you three ideas like short term medium term and long term how to really build out a book of serious cash buyers not like go buy this BS list and send out mailers but how to build real relationships with these guys and provide real value to them so I think that's the best thing we can we can point you to um, it's how to find cash buyers on the tips from the trainer playlist okay thank you very much appreciate it sure. excellent and all of a sudden uh, our our uh queue got cut in half. If anybody was in the queue and got dropped out, please uh, re-enter, hit star six and hit one again. Uh, next up, uh, phone number ending in 7100. You're up next. Chip, that's you. Hi, Are you there, sir? Great. Good. How's it going? Good. Chip out of Syracuse, New York. Good to see you guys. You too. Um, so, um, I do a ton of marketing, and, and I'm always looking for the uh, influencers that are in my area, especially on social media. So I don't want to be the one to congregate. Like, like if my favorite clients are golfers, or my favorite clients are for sale by owners, or my, one of my favorite clients right now is going to be probate. Um, so being new to this, um, I always look for people that are already congregating who my favorite clients are. For example, um, if, I, if I could get Davis Love, who people follow in the golfing community, to mention me in one of his uh, blogs or one of, or one of his Instagram or anything in the Syracuse market, that I get to be able to be broadcasted to like-minded people, and that helps me get credibility. Right now in New York State, we can do no cold calling. So we're, we're just sending out letters with zero cold calls going out after that because it's, it's not just against the rules, it's against the law to do any cold calling until September 1st. So my question is, who do you think are congregators of probate uh, people that, that I mean, I, I don't know that an attorney out there is going to have a lot of followers, uh, a probate attorney is going to have a lot of followers, or, so I'm just trying to find out who it is that's out there that I could get in touch with that already does a podcast and he has people that are following him, because I've got to get in front of these probators uh, probate you know, representatives and so other than I, writing the letters I, uh, that's all I know help I appreciate your creativity um, I, I, I commend you for that I think your your thinking is a little ahead of the industry that we're that we're serving and I don't think that you're going to find the influencers in a probate space that you have in a golf space right what we teach you, like what, like in Probate Mastery, we focus on on the, the kind of there's two branches. One branch is marketing, and the other is building a referral network and a, and a real network of of uh, people who are up upstream of your efforts, right? So what we focus on are estate planning attorneys, probate attorneys, nursing home employees, social workers, um, anyone who has that contact with families in the end of life phase. If they can understand that there's a business right here in the community that can do anything and everything to help a family in transition, including divorce, including guardianship, including probate, including trust administration, then and you can you can create those relationships by feeding them referrals, bringing real value to their business because the position you're in right now as a real estate professional in New York not being able to make a phone call is the position that every single estate planning attorney is in every single day of their career. So the way you feel is why it's such a, a, a gift when you bring an estate planning attorney of a vetted lead and say, this person is ready to talk to you. Like, it's super important for them to build their business now more than ever. 
because they have solicitation laws where they can't do what we do. They can't send out all kinds of direct mail and direct phone calls and directly solicit people for their service. So if you can find a way to create, to take the people in your network, those golfers, how many of them have an estate plan? Statistically, around 40% of them, even in the wealthy, in, in, in that demographic. So 60% of the people that you love so much are fully exposed, right? And during this time, while we're all sitting at home, who doesn't have time to put to get their house in order? So you should be leveraging the relationships you have as an influencer from Instagram, from the other golfers, the, the past clients that you love so much. You should be reaching out, talking to them, saying, you know what, I've been sitting here thinking about what I can do to be a, a, just to, to better serve my, my you know, clients. And I just realized one of the things you and I never talked about was, do you have a proper estate plan in place? Because I've been helping a lot of families in probate, and, man, I don't want to see anyone have to go through that, like, if you can avoid it. Because it's a, statistically, it's going to cost 5% of the gross value of your estate, and your family has to struggle through it for 9 to 12 months. Alternatively, if you set up a living trust, it's going to cost you two or three thousand dollars, and we'll be done with it in a week. And your family just has to do what what you what you want them to, and so they don't have to be a, involved at all. You just gave me a huge idea. Um, so when when those people raise their hand and they say, you know what, that's amazing. I I, I can't believe you're doing this right now. We're all stuck at home, and you know this is really making me think I could die any day. You're right. Let's go ahead and do that. Set up the call. Then you call an estate planning attorney you've never talked to, and you, you call and you say, listen, here's what I'm doing. I've raised my standard of service. I, I've been helping families in probate, and now that, that realtors aren't allowed on the phones, I've learned that you guys do this every day. Like, how the hell do you get by? So what I, I've gone through my, my client base, and I've asked for each person who, who would like for, for me to set up an estate plan for them. And I'm looking for the right partner to, to help me bring that service to my clients. Did I call the right number? So Do you think he's interested in talking to you? Can I throw something out there? Uh, that's sure. a phenomenal idea because I'm doing Facebook Live about four days a week right now. And I've been looking for somebody to co-host the Facebook Live with me. And I could bring a, an estate planning attorney on and say, hey, I've been trying to figure out what else value I can bring to you guys. So here's here's this. Um, Perfect, man. And then that goes out to his network. It goes out to my network. That's right. Um, we, we could do that with social workers. Um, uh, for example, I, I assume that almost everybody on this call is a, a real estate professional. Is that correct or am I wrong in that? Yeah, investors and brokerage, most people are blended. We try to cross-train or encourage everybody to cross-train themselves. So here's here's an FYI. Uh, I, I created a, a relationship with Stanley Steamer, and everybody, you know, in a lot of probate, I, I want to have a sanitized house. Stanley Steamer will go out now and sanitize the houses for coronavirus or for any reason. You can Every transaction can have that. I'm going to use family steamer and do a co-hosted with that but i'll definitely use social workers and estate planners thank you that's a great idea thank you yeah and you know chip as you were saying that it occurred to me what a timely what a great time to do it i mean it, it's never a bad time but you know everybody should have uh, a living trust and only five percent of americans do I, I just saw an article walt disney's family 20 years after he died is still fighting over his estate because he he had to go through probate, uh, and but everybody knows they're going to die, but they're not. They don't consciously deal with it. And when something like this is going on, this really brings it to the forefront. I think everybody's keenly aware now that you know that they're mortal, and I, I think the timing of this is phenomenal. So it, it may end up being a good thing that you can't make the calls. You may get more long-term business from from your approach. I, I, that's a great idea. Please uh, try it and come back and next week and a week after. Let us know how it's going. I'll come back next week and let you know. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. All right. Next up is phone number ending in 7976. You're up next. It's Hollywood Renee. Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. What's happening, Hollywood? 
<laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving consuming this um, content, and I just appreciate you guys so much. It's helping me double down on when this thing, you know, lifts. So I feel like I'm getting under all the the catch up. Um, question I had though is just a little bit more of like a brainstorm question. Is anybody else that you guys are talking to um, having success with the phones being picked up with lawyers? You know, so obviously we can't get to them face to face but just what kind of receptivity, if anything. So I, I haven't actually talked to anyone who's, who's reported on it. My assumption is that most legal offices are closed and the phone is forwarding probably to the attorneys. You're, you can likely bypass the gatekeepers right now. Mm. But I, mm -hmm. I haven't made the calls myself. I uh, haven't confirmed that. Any of the attorneys I've talked to, I've called them directly on their cell phones. So. I don't know, but what I would say is there's probably a, a pretty high likelihood that the receptionist is furloughed and the partners are taking the calls. Yeah, good idea. Okay. Anyway, yeah, Bray, I'll let you guys know. I'll, I'll be on it and report back. Also, Renee, in, in most uh, counties, we do get the attorney's email address, and we've had some success in the past, our agents have told us. Um, they do an email, and in the subject line of the email, they'll do a, a mail merge, and they'll reference the, the subject line will just say, regarding probate case number 75243. And it looks like official correspondence if it goes to the attorney, which I think most emails probably do. They probably don't go out by a, a gatekeeper. So you may want to try that also. In, in a good market, uh, the physical show up at their office is always best. but. Uh, you know, you may do well with both of those approaches now. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, and just a, a word of a word of caution on that. It, it does work, but in in two on two occasions in California, the reason I'm saying this, it was in Southern California, Renee. So, in two occasions, the attorney actually billed the family for an hour of his time because that was an <laughs> official email because oh, the geez. docket number because the docket number was in the subject line. He actually invoiced the damn estate two hundred dollars because he got that email. So, and and the reason we know this is because our subscriber got a got blasted when when they saw the invoice. They're like, "What the hell are you doing? Email my attorney. You cost us two hundred bucks." So just uh, be aware that if you make it official like that, some attorneys and I, I'm I'm telling you they're not the good attorneys, but some of them will take advantage of it. So just be aware that. If if that happens to you, be willing to step up and pay that invoice for the family if if you want to do business with them. I was just going to say I can okay. see Renee. I can see Renee saying no problem. I'll just take it off my commission when you list your property with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, listen to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's karma, right? It's going to come back on the attorney's end. It'll come back on my end. It's all good. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot. Next up uh, is phone number ending in 2121. You're up next. Hi. This is Carolyn Castillo. Hello there. I'm on every, I'm on every call that child's doing for the last two weeks. <laughs> oh, well, you have my condolences. I'm sorry. I feel bad for you. <laughs> Yes, so I'm excited to um, be able to bring a situation. Um, I haven't gotten my leads yet, but I did uh, reach out to one of my investors just to let them know what I'm doing and just to make sure that, you know, they're still on board to buy something as soon as I find it. And um, in that conversation, he had actually given me a lead of somebody that he just got a lead but didn't reach out to them and it was a probate situation. So I actually got to do a first probate call, like, totally randomly. And um, it was a very unique situation, so I don't know if this is going to be the common thing where you're dealing with all these kind of different things, but um, what happened was is the family um, didn't know the deceased person. So the family member is like... Um, cousin of a cousin of a cousin of a cousin, like way down the line, they've never even met the deceased person. And um, coincidentally, they live like a, a mile away from each other, which was the other strange thing. But uh, he got contacted by a family member in another state because an investor had contacted him. And then when the investor, I guess, had the lead, he has the lead too, um, 
he was saying, hey, this house is in probate. It's been in probate since 2017. So um, the guy that I have his number, he contacted his attorney and basically got the ball rolling with the whole thing. And um, he said that right now the attorney, they're trying to establish who in fact are the heirs of the property. And he told me that the property has is vacant. It's been vacant since 2017. It seems like it's been uh, vandalized. Like neighbors have said, they went in there, took out all the belongings, and now there's actually squatters in the house. And they had the police go over there, try to get them out, and they have established squatters' rights with like their name on documentation and everything. So the police said they'd have to evict them. So when he threw all that stuff out, <laughs> I was like, wow, you know, like I just basically BS my way through the conversation because I didn't really know which direction to go with it and, and waiting to actually talk to you guys and see how um, I presented to him as being the resource that we have a lot of different options, we have a lot, you know, but I didn't really dive into anything specifically and that we would follow up this week after he spoke to his attorney again. Before Chad answers, I want to congratulate you on your very first deal. You probably got the most complicated one you'll ever do, so <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> the, others will, the others will all be easy after this. <laughs> Go ahead, Chad. So I want to make sure I understand the, well, actually, I, I didn't catch this if you said it. The personal representative, is it, is it a public administrator? Did the court in 2017 appoint a public administrator? I didn't ask that question. So the first question is who is who has the authority? Who is the administrator of the estate? It's likely, I'm wondering how probate got filed. Um, there are investors that will actually go out and file probate on, and then later the family finds out. Um, I've seen that happen in Colorado and I don't know how they get away with it without eventually filing probate for another fa a family that comes in and tries to file probate and realizes someone else did this, but it has happened. So anyone, like I can go file probate on someone's estate and, and in the initial hearing if nobody objects then I become the administrator. And it's uncommon, but I have seen it happen. So the first question I would have is who filed probate? Like go, you may have to call the clerk and, and read the petition, but find out who made that first move because somebody had to. Usually in these scenarios, it'll go on for years until the state, the state reconciles things and realizes, okay, this social security number is now invalid. This, here's a death certificate on file. We're gonna appoint a public administrator and move forward according to state succession laws. I, I, doubt that's, I doubt that's what happened because why would they have done nothing for the last three years um, unless someone let something fall through the crack. So the first thing you need to do is determine who the actual administrator of the estate is. Once you've determined that, you need to, they, you need to find out where they are. Have they made contact with the family and does the family want to sell the asset? That's something you didn't mention. How, how many of the, have you talked to the family members, the heirs? No, I just who, got the, yeah, I only had the lead from the one family member. And I, there okay. a, from just our conversation, there was another family member, um, but he said that he just felt like it was so bizarre because he's, it's like so many generations down the line, and like he yeah. never knew her, and I guess, um, yeah. So I, can I? Well, it happens it with, with people who didn't. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. If I have the address and, you know, the tax record and I can see who, you know, who it is and everything, can I, is there a way I can look it up and see if I can find information about the probate? Yeah, it's a great opportunity for you to get out of your comfort zone and get to know your probate clerk. Well, I don't know if they're there during the quarantine right now. <laughs> it's a great opportunity for you to find out if they're there during a quarantine. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, I mean, what you need to do, you need, if, like, before you can really move forward, you need to understand who the, like, first, who was the petitioner? And second, okay. were they confirmed, and are they the administrator? Um, so a petitioner like, to, is not necessarily the administrator, or the... Um, not if somebody the, objected in the courtroom. 
okay. during the initial hearing. So there, some like you have to you have to figure out does somebody have the authority to make a decision here, and then do they want to sell the asset? Because you know these people, I'm guessing, I'm assuming they want to sell the asset, but you don't know if they have the authority. And yeah, you're not according sure that, to the, that both. According to the guy that I spoke with, uh, you know they want to sell the asset, but he, you know, he didn't know in fact. If, if they were, you know, at that stage yet where they could be making those decisions. Okay. And so, I, and I well, I, we're going we're gonna to move through this making some assumptions. We're going okay. to assume that somebody is appointed as the administrator. So step okay. one is get your hands on a copy of the petition for probate. Find out who the petitioner was. Get your hands on anything that, that you know, the letters of testamentary, if you can, to find out who has the authority and proof of that. Then find out how to get a hold of that person. Hopefully the probate clerk will have the contact information. The petition will have their name and address, not their phone number. You can skip trace to find a phone number. Once you've made contact with that person, let them know that you've already had contact with the family. You're well aware of the situation. You have a property manager who specializes in eviction services, and they're damn good at what they do. But what you would, and if, like, what, what market are you in? Broward. Uh, Florida. Okay, and you're under you're under a 60 day eviction moratorium, correct? Right. I did reach out to a um, eviction uh, company, exactly who you said. I, today that was my goal, and I actually made my whole um, list of all my vendors, which I'm really excited. I got a lot of good people. It sounds like, and they did say that they could move forward with that type of eviction right now. They said that because it's not a regular eviction, you know, there is the more the that word. Yeah, they said that well, there is a more moratorium. I'm sorry, if I'm saying that wrong. Um, but that type of eviction, because it's a squatters in there, it's a completely different, and they could uh, push that forward. I hope that's true. That's awesome. So that would be option one. Like get like once once the you once you know the who the administrator is and they say yes we would like to to sell like the the home needs to be sold, then you can move forward in that direction. If that wouldn't work or to be more expedient about it, um, you can go find a cash buyer who would who would want to own that house, have them step up with a thousand dollars and a moving truck or or have them have a moving truck show up, and say listen if if here's here's two hundred and fifty bucks if you sign this piece of paper. And it's not really going to be worth the paper it's written on. We want the commitment, right? So uh -huh. we've already talked to the we talked to the eviction court. You're not protected the way you think you are, and your ass is going to be homeless. But I can give you 250 bucks today to go ahead and get moving supplies and get prepared, and then I'll give you 750 dollars and and provide a moving truck for you on Friday. This is you have 24 you you have two hours to answer me. And the moving truck will be here for for four hours on, on or six hours on Friday, and that's it. Otherwise, we're going the judicial route, and you'll be sorry. I promise you that. And if that investor is, is has a vested interest, if that's his deal, and he's willing to put an extra thousand dollars in cash into it to get it at that price, he'll just factor that into his price. Then you could skip the courtroom and give them some cash. Who? I mean. They're waiting on they're waiting on their their money from the government right now, right? Not very many people have gotten that. So, if right now in this environment that can work better than ever, if you can line their pockets and just have them get out of the way, that might be the easiest way to clear the house. So, find the executor find, or find the the administrator. Find out that the confirm that the family wants to sell. Go to your cash buyer. Have your cash buyer go make them an offer. And if they take his offer, then he can he can sign an offer with you, or you can list it, or you can wholesale it, however you want to do it. But that's a way to get the house empty really quickly, and then your fallback fallback plan could be the judicial route, get them evicted out, and then you know get it on the market, and it's probably going to sell to an investor anyways. Yeah. Woohoo! Okay. All right, keep it keep keep it. us posted. Keep us posted. That's exciting. All right, take care. We have three more in the queue, guys. That should take us right up to the uh, top of the hour. So next up is phone number ending in 1899. You're up next. Hey, Chad, Watt Simpson, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm Excellent. good. I'm good. Hey, just real quick questions. 
This isn't a probate, but it is and it isn't. I, I, I got this listing from this family. I've known them forever. The mom died. The dad's 93 in assisted living, and uh, I'm talking to the daughter, who I have known forever. They're the only couple to ever live in this house. So they got an appraisal when he, when he moved out and it's higher than I've got the house listed for now. Um, we don't have an offer, haven't had an offer. I am supposed to get one today. It's a 19, late 50s, early 60s ranch. So the question is, how do you, if, if I've told the family not to put money in it because everybody's watching Chip and Joanna, um, how, I mean, if you, how do you decide to do that or not to do that and, and what to, to put in it, you know, to get your money back? I mean, what should they decide? Because they have the money and they could do it, but they don't really want to do it because of you don't know what somebody else wants. Yeah, I mean, for me, the answer is certainty. So when I'm certain if I put 20000 in, I can get 100000 back out, then that's the time to do it. And you just you don't don't go too trendy. Like I, I still like to use travertine looking tile. If you use really trendy tile, it's out of date in five years, right? And it's mm -hmm. usually a safe bet is to go with, with more earth tones. Everybody now mm -hmm. is doing everything in white, gray and black. And it's gonna be like nineteen ninety four. You remember the black toilets? Like everything was white and black and and now you walk in and you're like, My God, there's a black toilet with gold hardware. And now they're putting gold hardware in and black black everything and you know there's I've even seen biscuit appliances again, but don't do anything too trendy. Just stick with more traditional uh, traditional level rehab and you'll appeal to a lot more people. You might not appeal to the people who are addicted to HGTV, but all that said, um, right now I I couldn't in good conscience have a family invest a bunch of money into the home because I don't know what this looks like on the other side. I don't know how the market is going to react when we do think, bring things back online, but what I do know is we have close to 17% unemployment, and it will impact the real estate market. It will impact the buyers, and it's you know lending lending guidelines are tightening, um, not not through the the you know Fannie Freddie or or the, those organizations, but the investors aren't willing to buy a lot of that paper. So it's going to be harder for your your buy your your demand side is being affected right now, and that makes me nervous about having a family put their money into an asset that might not go up in value that much more. They might be breaking even and doing work that you said they don't want to do. So in this case, I would say you know my best advice to you is to actually discount the house and, and create liquidity, and then use that liquidity to invest in other assets when there's more certainty in the marketplace and ultimately you're going to make a lot more money with a lot less risk but we need we need to lower the price and get more aggressive on a strategy here what i recommend is a steep price reduction deeper than we think the house will sell for we'll 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 lit, we'll, we'll put that through on a thursday on thursday night and we'll call for offers the next friday and we'll we will put specific language in the public and private remarks saying that we are willing to accept you know, up to a 45-day inspection window for offer sight unseen. The other thing that you can do if they don't want to discount their equity is you can go out. Uh, I sh let me ask this question. You said the husband is in a nursing home. Do you know if the title transferred from husband wife to husband, or is it, the wife still yeah, in title? All, he, he's in assisted living, and I mean, he's, his mind's good. He just his body's wore out. And it was but, never but is again. he the only one on title right now? He is. He's almost ever okay. on title. Oh, okay. Well, perfect. Then in this case, this could be a really good uh, owner financing deal for you. You can show the family how to really maximize their equity without doing any work by selling it on terms. And they're these the, the same buyers that I just referenced that are being locked out of the marketplace. If, if you can find them, if you can educate the buyer's agents in your market and help them understand that they can buy this house basically with, the, with similar loan terms to what they were just rejected. So call the lenders, call the buyer's agents, 
everyone who's turning buyers away right now should know that you have a house listed with owner financing. And I'm going to tell you, you'll get covered up, and, and you need to have a, a system in place to, to guide your seller through underwriting the buyers. And I would recommend requiring them to go through a preferred lender to do a full 1003 application, and then you, with, with every offer, you have to submit their loan application and a letter from the lender why they don't qualify. And that, that, gives, that gives your seller a roadmap. It's like, it's like, listen, here's why they can't qualify. They have strong credit. They have strong income. They lost 50% of their retirement account because of the stock market correction, but they haven't sold. They still, that money will come back over time, so you don't have much risk here. This one, application B, this guy has no job, he has no money, his credit is, as soon as, you know, we, we uh, people are allowed to report default, his credit's going to hell and I don't feel good about him. So let's go, like, how do you feel about A? So as long as you can guide your seller through finding the right borrower to sell to, um, that could be a way that they could have their cake and eat it too. They can sell at a premium price in this environment. There's not much out there like this. A buyer is, is a buyer who just got rejected. They're still super motivated for the reasons they needed to buy a home. And small business owners are really good target buyers. Um, you know, if 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 you know that they have good, strong finance, fundamental financials, but right now they don't and they can't get approved for a loan, or if they just started their business in the last year and all of a sudden they're in an industry that's booming right now, like they just bought a laundromat. Um, things like that. So those are the kind of buyers you need to find. But you can you can kind of lock in. You could probably sell it at the price you have it listed for now using creative financing, or you can discount it and show them ways to reinvest that money to grow it back to the same number over the next three or four years, anyways. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Appreciate it, Chad. You sure that guy wasn't your brother? He sounds just like you. White. <laughs> <laughs> same slight same slight accent just kidding uh next up is phone number ending at 0727 you're up next hey how are you guys doing this is jonathan hawkins from dallas texas hey jonathan or, or jay hawk doesn't matter hey you know what um i'm still a newbie here i'm learning a lot like i said before when i called in and one time before i'm drinking from a water hose and i love it uh, it, it's I'm, I feel invigorated, even though we're going through these times. I I feel invigorated. Now, my question to you guys is: It may be you you may have posted this somewhere. I didn't see it, and um, just wanted to know: Have you done um, a listing presentation over Zoom, like a mock one or something like that, that you see see the, how the flow goes? Um, I'm really just trying to. I've never done one. I, I've done listing presentation before because I'm a realtor. And and I'm trying to taper some of my my aggression down because I'm usually more aggressive, and so I know that's not what I'm looking for um, when I'm dealing with, with people. When I'm dealing with families or personal representatives. So is there? So you what? Know, what you're looking done? for? The only, I've always wanted to strap a GoPro to my chest and actually show you guys what it's like to do this in real life, but. Right. I've just I've not, I've never done it. I don't know what the legalities of that are. Mm -hmm. um, I I haven't done it. I I really wish I would have when I was doing these every day. But um, what I do in probate mastery, the last 35 40 minutes of mastery, I show you literally from the time I step out of my truck until I hand them the blue pen. I show you every little tip and trick and my approach, my demeanor, the psychology that I use. There's little indicators that, that I use to figure out who thinks they have authority, even if they're not the personal representative. So I take you through exactly move by move, step by step, word by word, everything I do in a face-to-face -face appointment. And I'm doing it as a realtor or investor. I don't decide until I'm about, I don't know, three quarters of the way through the appointment. I don't even decide what my, what my play is. I let the family determine that. But what you're looking for lives within session three of probate mastery. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm currently going through that right now, so I've I've, I've kind of paused um, at at hour one right now and, and took this call, and so I'm uh, so I'll finish it up. So this so it that sounds like I'm gonna find what I'm looking for when I finish up session. Three. Your your water hose is about to turn into a fire hose, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> man, look, if you see my notebooks, man, I'm doing mind maps, 
and bruh, it is real. I have done, I have completely done like one complete, complete notebook, and my wife has gifted me with one of hers because she's in school. And man, I am going, I'm pouring through these notes every day. I'm just trying to get my game tight because what I don't want to do is look bad in front of people. I hate that. So um, I want to present myself as a professional. And I want to help these people, but I, but in order for me to help them, they have to believe and trust that I know what I'm doing and I can provide value to them. And I and I always want to present that. So um, uh, that's I think that's why I'm being a little, a little dogmatic, and I don't want to seem like I'm having um, analysis by you know paralysis by analysis. But I just want to get my game tight. If that makes any sense. Sounds to me like you're taking action, man. Keep your head down. Keep running. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. I was going to caution you. That is one of the biggest mistakes sometimes people make when they get started. They want to know everything before they do anything. You know, you, you, and a lot of it you're going to learn as you go. And mm -hmm. also, it'd be a good it'd be a good opportunity to mention. I think a lot of people aren't aware of it. What do we have now, uh, Chad? Do we have like five, six, seven hundred hours of recorded content? Am I exaggerating, or is is that about no, between all of our? We may, we may be over seven hundred hours. Um, yeah. And so we're never going to tell you to start at day one and listen to it. You guys have lives. But uh, we have probably the most robust search bar I have ever seen anywhere. So if you – it's virtually like Google. You can go to alltheleads.com and type almost anything in the search bar. If you don't find it right away, just play around with it like Google. And it will take you right to what you're looking for. So if it's a specific objection, uh, getting started with your calls, prospecting attorneys, lightning strike. I mean, you can put almost anything in there and, and allow you to kind of laser focus on what you really need help with. And we had one more person in the queue, but we lost them. So um, that is it for this week, guys. Boy, great timing. We got a lot accomplished, and we did it in an hour, which is rare. Um, I want to thank – I want to close this call like I always do. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I want to challenge you. We heard some great stories, some great ideas, techniques. Take one thing you learned on this call, go out and put it into practice, and please come back next Thursday and share your results with the group. Thank you so much, guys. Make it a great week. Stay healthy, stay productive, and we will talk to you same time next Thursday. Take care.